Well, good morning, church. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time, let's rise to our feet. Welcome to the Grove, everybody. I'm so glad that you all chose to come out and join uh, me in our church family and worship. If you're new, we'd love for you to get connected with us. There's connect cards you can fill out. We just want to be in touch and know how we can love on you and how we can pray for you. And uh, But right now, we're going to come together as a, as a corporate body, and we're going to give 150% of worship. Yes. Let's worship together. This is that song we learned last week about the battle belonging to the Lord. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. But there's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh, God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh. There's nothing impossible with our God. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Come on. struggling right now who needs the God is almighty who can fight every battle for us sing almighty almighty fortress you go before nothing can stand nothing can stand against the power of our God he shine shine
Almighty Fortress, I think somebody in the room needs to sing this today. You're the Almighty Fortress. You go before us. Nothing can stand. Because you shine in the shadow. You shine. And you win. He wins every battle. There's not a thing that can stand. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of my God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of my God. Where do we fight, church? Come on. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you and every fear. I'll lay at your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs. Sing, oh God, the battle. Oh God. The battle belongs. Believe it in your heart and let's sing, oh God. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. When you wait on the Lord, He'll give you the strength to persevere. Let's sing about it. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign for.
about deliverance and exodus. I love this song. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart. Because you found into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom, into the promised land, and I will not forget you, I'll sing of all you've done, death is swallowed up forever, by the fury of your love, you stepped into my you took me by the hand You marched me out in freedom Into the promised land And I will not forget you I'll sing of all you've done Death is swallowed up forever Whatever your Egypt is By the fury of Lay it at the foot of the cross You stepped into my Egypt You took me by you watch me, watch me out in freedom into the promise. And I will not forget. I'll sing of all you done. And it's all it up forever. I'll be Could you stay? You stepped into my Egypt. You took me by. Oh! 
you stepped into my Egypt, you took, took me, me by, by the hand, you marched me out in freedom to the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Thank you for your love. to my Egypt. You stepped into my Egypt. You stepped into my Egypt. Take those things that are dragging you down to the bottom where you think, God, where are you at? He's right there, though. God, I promise to follow through the Egypt, to follow through the pain, to follow through the hurt, to follow through the confusion, to follow through the depression, even when it seems like I can't wake up, can't get out of bed, through the anxiety that says, stay down. Father, Egypt that you have us through, God, just lead us by the hand and pull us through. We love you. We will not forsake you. We will sing of your love. You can take a seat. As we come towards the time of communion, the kids can be dismissed. They're already heading that way. Um, relating to Dave's message last week, um, back in college, way, way back in college, I was doubt, becoming a doubting Thomas way more than that. I was on the verge of atheism for sure. I remember looking up one night at the stars and just saying, God, if you're really real, show me. And he did. He brought me back through science and reasoning, just like he showed Thomas. Um, he opened my eyes and to the fact that you can't have DNA without DNA polymerase three, and you can't have DNA polymerase three without DNA. Classic chicken or the egg. Now for the non cellular molecular biologists in the room, that's like saying you have a big pile of steel and you cannot erect a skyscraper without having an engineer and a construction crew to put it together. So even if you think you could explain macroevolution to me, science will never explain where original matter came from. You can't explain it. So God let me, led me to the understanding that there is a supreme creator and through further studies that Jesus is the way to get to that creator. Um, <clears throat> so if you're here today and you are you have a child or a grandchild, or maybe you yourself have any questions or a scientific mind like mine, I'd love to talk with you. Feel free to talk with me after service or any time about this stuff. I love this stuff. Um, so how does this relate to communion today? Um, sorry, I lost my spot. Well, I really just want you to know that Christ was really here and he really was beaten on a cross. He really died for us. They speared him in the side. There's plenty of evidence for this. Read the case for Christ. And God really loves us so much that he gave us one and only son for us and that he really atoned for us through the blood. So this is all real stuff. Um, so this morning, after we examine ourselves, let's just be grateful for this amazing gift that we have in Christ. Um, and as we partake in these emblems, just, just focus on our gratitude and our love that he's done such a thing for us. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. We partake in these emblems in remembrance of you and what you've done for us. We thank you so much once again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Heavenly Father, Father, your faithfulness comes. Father, it's such just a, a mind-blowing shock due to the nature of my, my weakness, my selfishness, my pride. But yet you're faithful. Father, may I never forget, never take for granted in make a move or a breath without remembering that you are there and you are faithful. And whatever lies before me, Father, nothing is sweeter, nothing is greater, nothing is more perfect, no plan is more well thought out than what you have in store for me and that you are faithful. Even some major depression. Elijah, the prophet of God, said in 1 Kings 19, verse 4, he said, I have had enough, Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my ancestors who have died before me. Moses cried out in Numbers eleven fifteen, 15, I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, God, just go ahead and kill me. Do me a favor and spare me the misery. Jesus told Peter, James, and John on the night before his crucif crucifixion, he said, my soul is crushed with grief, even to the point of death. And King David, the man after God's own heart, saying in Psalm 42, day and night, I have only tears for food, for food. And my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. Studies say that some 17 and a half million people face depression every year in our country. It's so rampant that one psychologist called depression the common cold of emotional health. Just this week, there was a, a headline about a 28-year-old young lady, 28 years old, who has, suffers from depression, who is in the Netherlands, who's decided that she's going to take advantage of their euthanasia law and end it all. 28 years old. One study revealed that the more money you make, the more likely you are to be depressed. And I'm not just, this isn't me, this is, my, this is a study that says that women are twice as likely as men to be depressed, which leads me to the conclusion that poor men are the happiest people on the planet. Now, depression's no respecter of persons. It, it falls on the rich and the poor, the fast and the slow. It hits white-collar and blue-collar workers, the young and the old, great people. You think that great people in, in our history have been depressed? Our heroes of the Christian faith have been depressed. Godly people have been depressed. 
People like Moses and Jeremiah and Job and Elijah. In 1 Kings 18 and 19, I want to tell you just that little, give you a little bit of, of you know, background about Elijah. And I'm going to talk to you about Elijah this morning because Elijah, he's a preacher in the Old Testament, an Old Testament prophet who had an enormous task. And here's the deal, that you, you have King Ahab, a totally wicked king, and his idol-worshiping sidekick, Queen Jezebel. And this dynamic duo just encouraged the worship of Baal and, and false god. And so God calls Elijah to confront King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. And Elijah tells them that the one true God is really put off by their wickedness and the worship of Baal and, and it needs to stop. And it's not going to, to rain until they start worshiping the one true God. And so Elijah wasn't too popular with King Ahab and Qu Queen Jezebel after that. They actually sought to kill him. And they put the search parties out to try and, and find him and, and end his life. And over the years uh, of drought, the tension really built between the prophets of Baal and Elijah. And so if you have your Bibles or you can look on your phone, it'll be on the screen, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. And this, it's like an Old Testament, West, Old Western showdown, if you will. Elijah summoned the king and queen and 450 prophets of Baal and anyone else who wants to witness the showdown to meet him on top of Mount Carmel. And so in verse 21, it says, Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. When they said, if Baal is, is God, follow him. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let them choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not to set fire to it. I will prepare the other bull and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, sounds like a great idea, Elijah. And so you skip down to verse 26, and it says, so they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered. And they danced, and they danced, and they danced around the altar that they had made. And at noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. There was some taunting going on. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. And so they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. And midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response, no one answered, no one paid attention. And so then Elijah steps up and he says, watch this, boys, it's my turn, and we're going to have ourselves a barbecue. In verse 33, it said to them, he said to them, this is Elijah talking, fill four large jugs of water, pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down around the altar and even filled the trench. And at the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, show them your stuff, God, show them your power, and then whammo. You look at what happened, verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell prostrate. Prostate, prostrate, not prostate. That's an old another story. My buddy Adrian talked me into that one. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And I don't know about you, but that is one of the first videos that when I get to heaven, I'm going to pull up. And maybe we'll get some, you know, ocular devices. We probably won't need them. But I'd love to bring up that video and see what that looked like. But immediately after this, God tells Elijah that the drought is going to end because his power had been clearly seen and the practice of Baal worship had been soundly defeated. And so Elijah tells the king, hey, you better get your chariot down the mountain before it starts raining and you get stuck in the mud. 
And he takes off and this cool thing happens because the Bible tells us in verse 46 that the power of God came upon Elijah and he outran Ahab's chariot all the way back into town. And if you look on a map, that's about 18 miles. That's an 18 mile run that, King, that Elijah outran King Ahab's chariot. And if I were Elijah, if I had just beat King Ahab, not only on top of the mountain, but also back in town, I know what I would have done. I would have, I would have gotten in the end zone. I would have done a touchdown dance. I would have spiked the ball. I would have chanted, you know, rubbed in his face, maybe do a little of this, a little point to the ring, you know, say, hey, I won. No. But you're not going to believe what, what Elijah's found saying just a short time later. After this incredible victory, Elijah, a servant of God, said, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. Isn't that incredible? After this great victory, just that quickly, he's in despair. He's depressed. Now, just when you think you can just kind of start snoozing, I want everyone to stand up. Just everybody stand up right now. Just humor me, okay? But if you have experienced any one of these symptoms that I'm going to share and list on the screen, and wait till I get to the end of the list, but if you've experienced any of these symptoms, I want you to sit down, okay? Look at these, lack of energy, loss of, loss of appetite, feelings of guilt, feelings of self-pity, moodiness, forgetfulness, sleep difficulty, neglecting spiritual life, indecisiveness, withdrawal from family, hopelessness, withdrawal from friends, can't reason well, neglecting appearance, discouraged, difficulty concentrating, not in stomach, no interest in anything, sit down. Joe, you're my idol. All right. Give it up for Joe. That's funny right there, man. I love you, Joe. Now, when several of these symptoms of depressive disorder, uh, you know, occur at the same time and they last longer than two weeks and interfere with ordinary functioning, then I, I, as your pastor, I would say you need to seek professional treatment. Okay, you need to seek some counsel. You need to seek, maybe talk to your doctor. And this morning, we're going to continue our series, I Have a Friend Who. And this morning, I want to talk to you, but maybe you have a friend. I have a friend who is dealing with depression or severe discouragement. You could say it that way. And looking at Elijah, I want to just give you some very practical tools to help your friend or even yourself in a, if you're in a depressing you know, situation. And so just to help them, number one, help them be aware of potential problems. When does depression strike? Why does it come? And certainly you agree that there are situations that make you more vulnerable to depression than others. One of them is when you are physically fatigued. I mean, look at Elijah. One of his big problems was he was just completely worn out. This guy had just run 18 miles in the rain. He was drained emotionally and physically. And we, that's when we need to be careful when we're physically fatigued. It's very easy to get depressed. Secondly, that after a victory, after the high, there's the lows. How about when, you know, ladies, when having a baby and that joy and that thrill of childbirth is oftentimes followed by postpartum depression. And I'll tell you why, there's a natural letdown after high times. We often get blindsided, much like Elijah, because we forget that there's always, always a valley after a mountaintop experience. There's nothing wrong with mountaintop experiences. When you go to camp or, or you've gone to a conference and you experience, or maybe you go to a men's encounter and you, you'll, you'll experience this incredible mountaintop experience with God. But be ready for at the, after the high lows, after a great victory. C.S. Lewis said this, the times I find myself most vulnerable to the attacks of depression is after defending Christianity most brilliantly. Number three, another dangerous situation we need to be aware of is when we experience constant problems. Elijah faced a series of problems, one constant pressure after another. He had to face the, the king and the queen and tell them, hey, you're wicked. That's never fun. He had to face the drought. He had to stand alone and face those guys on Mount Carmel. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when he gets back into town and he's told that Queen Jezebel wants him dead. She's going to come kill him. And he had to think, what next? What next, God? God, I can't take anymore. 
You ever been there? And some of you, and maybe, maybe some of you, it's in a relationship. You're like, God, what's next? Or, or in your marriages even. Or you're, you're just saying, hey, I don't know, God, if I can take one more shouting match. Some of you have been there financially, and you're trying to dig yourself out of debt, and the car breaks down, and there's a medical emergency, and you're worse off than ever before. And some of you, you've been there as parents, and you continue to have that one parental challenge after another. And you say to yourself, I don't think I can take this anymore, God. But have you ever noticed that small problems look like big problems when you're having lots of problems? Let me give you another danger. It's loneliness. Elijah felt alone. He, felt, he thought he was the only one left standing for God. And there are times when we anticipate that we might feel lonely and do something about it. And most of us, we're, we're familiar with, with this song, you know, kind of show our age, but I think even, you know, my kids, you know, they, they were familiar with, with this, comment, this TV show. And uh, they had to watch it, I think, on Netflix. But this, it's a theme song for a television show that was pretty popular. You recognize it? You probably can sing it too, can't you? I'm gonna be this way. Uh. Mm. Okay, get it. And what? I'll be there for you, right? When the what? Rain starts to pour. You know, sometimes we feel, and that's why it's so important in a church that you get connected. Get connected. Get into a life group or a Bible study, or a D group, and then we have that connect track. Or that's why we, we do, do those lunches. We don't, we, we don't do those lunches just because I like to eat. I do like to eat, okay? Don't get me wrong. And if every week we, we'd have Mexican food when we're, we're doing lunch, okay? But, but tell, I, I'm just telling you, you need to stay connected. You need to get connected. You're wired for relationship. You're wired for connection. And, and you're, you're, you're not going to grow spiritually to where you want to grow, where God wants you to grow if you're not connected, if you're not in regular fellowship with, with the body of believers. And, and there, we've got all kinds of Bible studies. We've got new ones for them. We've got ladies' Bible studies. We've got, there's, there's men's Bible studies. You know, Ron, there's such a need. Ron started, he's got one on Tuesday night. He's got one on Thursday uh, around noontime or one. I mean, there's, the, the, you know, there's ladies, uh, I think, on, on a, a Tuesday afternoon. There's a couple others that are just starting up. That, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities for you to get connected. And the opus that meets on, on Wednesdays, that that would be my encouragement to you, to get connected. Because the devil loves nothing more to, than to get you to feel lonely, to feel like isolated, because he knows that's when you're at your weakest. And man, put the, if you have a smartphone, you know, we encourage you to put the church center app on there. And there, there's a team of people to help you put that on your phone. And then you, you can look at life groups that are available. You can, you can uh, watch the sermons through that. You can give through that. But you can stay connected and up to date on, on events like you would know. I wouldn't even have to tell you that this coming next uh, Sunday, we've got a membership class available if you're thinking about placing membership. But also that right after that, we're having our smoke out. And we're, we're going to do burnt ends this, this year. And so we got brisket, we got pork. Man, it's going to be delicious. And so you'll want to come to that, right? But secondly, is get God's perspective on your life. Get God's perspective on your life. Now, this, this week I got to, um, I, I've been wanting to go fly fishing. And uh, I, I need, just like everything else, I need uh, all the help I can get. And so uh, a good friend in the church uh, hollered at me and, and said, hey, would you like to go fly fishing? 
And so I was like, absolutely. So have my schedule. We come, I met him uh, on Thursday uh, late morning, and, and so because I wanted to get to know him uh, more, and and uh, and I, w- I want to fly fish and, and get better at it, right. And so and I realized that you know when I didn't have the glasses on, that I could you know I could see out there in the water, but but you're limited in your seeing. And then I put my sunglasses on, and I can look down, and that's where all the fish are. They're right. They're at my feet. I was like, that's why I'm not, I'm casting out there. They're right there. But you know, what I would say is getting a new perspective is you put your God glasses on. And it wouldn't be cool if each one of us had a magic pair of glasses that would allow us to see things the way God sees them. And we do. It's called the Bible. We have God glasses right here in our hands. And the best way to get God's perspective is to put your God glasses on, just like this. And and, I mean, you just, let me show you. Let me show you how these glasses work. Because when we put God's glasses on, I mean, we can see that there are some benefits to, even even the benefit to depression, that you you can grow in your spiritual walk and in your journey with the Lord. You can, you know, come to maturity. There, there's, there's depth there. there there's a, a, a seeking God and an ability even to help others, even in the midst of depression. We can also see how the real enemy is. And sometimes, sometimes it's ourselves where we're beating ourselves up. And sometimes, sometimes the devil's feeding us lies about our life. Oh, he loves to do that. But our God glasses can help us see the, the, the lie that Satan is trying to get us to believe. Oh, maybe you think, hey, I, I'm, you have a lie. I may, I've made some mistakes. I've failed God so many times that he can never forgive me. But you put the God glass, glasses on, you realize that's a lie. Because in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul says that the Bible, he's saying God's grace is what is sufficient for us. Maybe that lie where you say to yourself, I'm so weak. <laughs> I don't think I can make it anymore. And you put on the God glasses. And 2 Corinthians 12, 9 tells us that God's power is made perfect in our weaknesses. Which means, yeah, you're weak. I'm weak. <laughs> but it gives God an opportunity to work in us and through us. Or maybe you say, you know, I'm so depressed. I don't, even, I don't even know what to pray anymore, God. And you put on your glasses in Romans 8.26 and Romans 8.34 assures us that the Holy Spirit speaks on our behalf. He translate, translates our tears even into a perfect prayer to the Father. How many of you here today need to put on some God glasses more often? Me too. Another thing we can learn from Elijah is that it's helpful is, is that we are pro, proactive in the present. The Bible tells us that it was one of the first things he did. Elijah rested. Looking at just physical renewal. And if and when you're depressed, I want to encourage you to take it easy, to go to a park and maybe read, get a book, read all day long, read your Bible, go to, go to the lake, go to, go to the, the river, catch some fish, go to the gym, get a little exercise, Go to the arcade down at the landing. I think they still have that whack-a-mole game and just start beating the, you know, the moles. Just hit them hard, you know. It'll bring you some physical renewal. Maybe go to bed one hour early for seven days in a row and see how that changes your, your heart. Elijah connected with people as well. God assures Elijah that he's not alone. He thought he was alone, but he's not alone. Elijah's whining to God. There, there's, no, there's no one, you know, that, I, no one to face this with. I'm, I'm facing this. Nobody understands. No one's been through what I'm going through, God. And God says in verse 18, Elijah, you're not alone. I can name 7,000 people, Elijah, who have not bowed down to Baal. And then God sends Elijah to form a friendship with a guy, guy named Elisha. And they connect in verse 19. And this is the beginning of a great friendship. It's relational renewal. And that's what I love about the Old Testament. All the names just start melting together, right? Because Elijah meets Elisha. And Elisha becomes, you know, a great source of encouragement to Elijah. And Elijah becomes a mentor to Elisha. And there's a relational renewal. And it's a typical response to depression is we want to isolate ourselves. 
from family. We want to isolate ourselves from our friends. And, and, we, and, and Satan's so good as to isolate ourselves, to pull away from the church. But I can, if I can encourage you to just stay, stay connected to those who care about you. Let them encourage you. Let them lift you up. Let them help you. But Elijah also reconnected with God. God meets Elijah at the entrance of this cold, dark, damp cave. And the Bible says that God did not shake the place with an earthquake. He didn't come like a roaring fire or some big, loud, stormy voice. But instead, God comes with the gentle whisper. And he talked with Elijah. God did not come down and lecture him and say, Elijah, you're a worthless waste of space. You better turn that frown upside down and cheer up, buddy. No. God, almighty and all powerful, but he is also compassionate and tender. You cannot imagine the kind of help he's ready to offer you today. He wants to help. It's spiritual renewal. And so maybe you need to do some things that will put you in a position to be spiritually renewed. Or maybe you say, you know what, I need to, I need to faithfully attend a church. I need, to, I need to get plugged in and be committed and not just come every once in a while. Or, or maybe I need to spend, I need to take a sabbatical a whole day or spend time alone with God in a place where there's no distractions, far from your problems, where you shut off your phone and you turn off all the devices and you just, you get alone with God and maybe you're praying and maybe you're journaling and, and you're listening and you're resting and you plan a day that you're going to get away and let the Holy Spirit rejuvenate you. But also Elijah got back in the game. He got back in the game. I love that. He, Elijah listened to God and he gave him a clear assignment to get back into the game. Elijah had a renewal of purpose. And so when we feel hopeless and purposeless, we need to remember that God has given us a purpose. He's given each one of us in this room a purpose to love him and to love others. And God has clearly given us our purpose. The real question is, will we attempt to accomplish his purposes on our own? Because here's the deal. If we spend too much time dwelling on our feelings, dwelling on our needs and our stuff, our baggage, we become more depressed. Self-absorbed people are never happy people. Amen? Just let's say that aloud together. Self-absorbed people are never happy people. Let's say it one more time. Self-absorbed people are never, there's always somebody lower than you. Someone more discouraged than you. Someone more depressed. So find them. Make an effort to lift them up. And I know there's this point where there's this hang up, right? I understand. I get it. Trust me. When we're depressed, we don't think we can help anybody. You can't even help yourself. So how can I help that other dude? You know, I, or I don't have anything to offer God. I can't serve. I'm inadequate. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. We are never too broken to be used by God. So offer all the pieces to him even the broken ones, and offer all of your heart, no matter how little you think that is, and you will be amazed at what God will begin to do in you and through you. So help those people fill their tank as they do God's will. Help them to ultimately put their hope in God. I'm gonna, I wanna end the service a little bit differently, this sermon uh, this morning. I wanna, I wanna share with you Psalm 42, all of Psalm 42 as the praise team comes back up. And, and I, I just want you to listen uh, to this, and then we're gonna have our decision time, uh, but it's gonna be a song maybe you're familiar with, but um, the praise, it's gonna be introduced to you, a new song, and where you can just, I want you to stand, and uh, you're, you're gonna listen when, when, when I'm done reading here, but I just want you to just really listen to David's heart as he pours out to God in Psalm 42. He says, as the deer, you might even remember, they've got to sing this song at camp, growing up in church. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul, you can hear the, the agony, my soul pants for you, my God. My soul, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? 
My tears have been my food day and night. We read that at the beginning of the message. While people say to me all day long, where's your God? Where's your God? You, you, you worship this God? You praise this God? Where, where's your God? I don't see him acting on your behalf. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. He's not feeling so joyous, no, not, not festive. And when my soul, why my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Here's the answer. Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep. In the roar, roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. And by day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. And I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer. Oh, mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? But why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Oh, here's the answer. Put your hope in God. And yet I will praise him, my Savior and my God. You know, not too many people are able to empathize with a friend who's dealing with depression. But I can assure you, Jesus can. He knows. He knows how he or she's feeling. And he knows how we feel when we, we, we feel lousy or we feel depressed. And if you ever get depressed, if you, if you are depressed or if you know someone who's depressed, remember that Jesus is waiting with his hand extended saying, I know how you feel. But don't you hate it when you're telling someone that you're hurting and they just tell you, yeah, I know how you feel. And you're saying to yourself, no, you don't. No, you don't. But Jesus can say that. And I know it's true because in Mark 14, Jesus said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Jesus is reaching out his hand today and he's saying, tell me about it. Let me love on you. So if you're hurting today, and you need a special touch from Jesus, I want to encourage you, as we, we, the praise team sings this song, I want you to step out and come down to the aisle, and there will be some people to pray with you today. They'll, they'll be they're here just not to judge, just to just pray with you, to lift you up. If you want to know how you can have a personal relationship with Jesus today, you come. If you want to be baptized today, proclaim your allegiance to Jesus Christ, you come. If you're depressed, I want to challenge you to come forward and make today the day that you take a few steps toward overcoming depression as you give it and put it at the feet of Jesus. Let me pray, and then let's just stand together right now. Let's everybody stand, and the praise team is going to sing this song. Lord, I just pray. I pray that we would just see you see you right there extending your hand and, and saying, tell me about it. Lord, thank you for being a compassionate, tender God. And Lord, that whatever we're going, maybe we're not dealing with depression. Maybe we're, we're trying to deal with someone else that's depressed and just uh, equip us, Lord. And Lord, maybe there's some people here this morning that they're hearing your voice to say yes to you, to go all in, to be baptized, Lord, today. Today's the day. There's no better day than today to go all in, to be buried with you and to rise to the newness of life, to become that new creation in Christ. So, Father, would you just speak to us and Lord, as we listen to this incredible song, may we just see and hear your voice and respond accordingly. And all God's people said, amen. You come as the praise team sings. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, move. 
Cause when you have your way Something has to break Tear down every lie Set the wrong thing to right Cause when you have your way Something has to break Something has to break I feel it in this room Holy Spirit move Cause when you have your way Something has to break Tear out every lie Set the wrong thing right Cause when you have your way Something has to break Something has to break Something has to break Right now in your name Something has to break Something has to break right now. Something has to break right now in your name. Something has to break. Something has to break. Top. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, move. Because when you have your way, I have to break. Tear down the lies. Set wrong things right. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, move. Because when you have Something has to break Tear down every line Set the wrong things right Cause when you have your way Cause when you have your way And in this room Please holy Holy Spirit move Cause when you have your way Something has to break Tear down every lie Set the wrong thing right Cause 
Cause when you have your way, something has to break. Hey, you know, the Bible said it was, you know, God was moving in the early church that people were being added daily, you know, and that God was, God was the one adding that. And, and uh, for the last, I think it's five weeks, we've, we've had a baptism every Sunday. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And, and so um, excited. Uh, we've got uh, Jenna Shecker has, has come uh, to to be baptized into Christ, and uh, her brother is going to baptize her, and he promised he wouldn't hold her down too long. So, Jen, if you want to go ahead and step in, and I'll, can I, can I, oh, yeah, I'll need the mic later for Brian, but go ahead and come all the way down, sit down. Definitely warm. But Jen, you can go ahead and sit down. Yeah. And Jenna, I want to ask you before everyone, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? And is it your personal choice today to make him the Lord, the Savior, the boss of your life? Amen. All right, go ahead and grab your, yeah. Jenna, because of your confession of faith, and Jake's going to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to be buried with her, with him in baptism, and to rise to a newness of life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. All right. And then this is Jaden has come today as well. And uh, Jaden, if you come on Thursday night, you, you'll see Jaden sitting next to me during the worship time singing his heart out. And I love it. And so Brian's going to take your confession of faith, Jaden, and, and, uh, and then Jake's going to baptize you. Amen. Hey, church, welcome Jaden to the Baptist Church. <laughs> Jaden, I'm going to ask you to repeat you this phone. confession after you me. Phone. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And I want him now. I want him now be my personal Lord and Savior. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Jaden, because of your confession, you're now baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That's what it's about. Stand up. If you stand up and, uh, man, praise God today. Awesome. And then Jaden's brother is getting baptized Thursday night. And so uh, come on out and uh, witness that. Be a part of Thursday service. Hey, if you, you know, you work on Sundays or you're going to be gone, you know you're going to be Come on Thursday. Come and join us. We've got a great, great team that's uh, doing worship and, and doing incredible. And, and just it's a, it's a great little, little group that's growing upstairs. But th this Sunday, next Sunday, is the, the membership class and the smoke out. And so here's what I'm asking you. If you will sign up and say, hey, let us know. If you're coming to the membership class, you can go back to the connect counter. If you, it doesn't, you know, you, even if you just come to the class, doesn't mean that you have to place membership. It's just a great way for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us to find out more about the church. And then, secondly, um, we need we've got um, a few guys. We're we're looking for I think six guys total uh, to uh, be a part of the the smoke out. And so we've got the, a brisket for you and and a, a pork. Uh, belly, and that uh, if you'll be willing to commit to making uh, burnt ends and, uh, you know, just your family recipe, you don't have to share the secrets, um, but to bring it and then we'll, we'll judge. And then we need people to come and bring sides, but that's for, not just for the people who are coming to the membership class, but that's the smoke out for the whole church. And so we want you, we want everyone to come. We need some, some of you to sign up to bring sides, to, to participate in the smoke out. And we've got the meat in the kitchen, and we'll give that to you uh, today if you'll, if you'll commit to that. So um, please, please, please sign up before you leave here today. Amen? Let's sing our closing song. No. 
all I see is the battle You see my victory Yeah, when all I see is a mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadows Your love surrounds me Oh, choir, you sound beautiful There's nothing There's nothing to fear now For I am safe with you where we gonna fight? Come on. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you, yeah. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty, yeah. When all I see is a cross, God, you see. can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing, nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in Shadow, yeah, yeah. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. Go to be in the grace. You're dismissed this morning, church.